There are businesses in other parts of the world, all they do is storage. That's an agro-processing. From there you go into packaging. Packaging into marketing. So you, and you can be somebody who is in the agro-marketing business. So please understand that the financial outlay, the financial income that one can get out of agriculture is tremendous. It is the sector in Africa that has the largest employment of the population. In some countries, 80% of the population is employed in agriculture. So our role in, in AFAD is to encourage and to work with governments and other development partners to see that smallholders and youth play a vital role in the economy. Uh, well, very quickly, the issues of the impacts of the macroeconomic uh, advice that, that many African countries received in the 70s and 80s, yes, plans of introducing subsidies in Africa, it's already taking place, Mal Malawi. The miracle story of Mal Malawi was because the government introduced much subsidies for inputs, seeds and fertilizers. Prior to 2005, as you heard, Malawi was a net importer of food. Today, Malawi has been producing excess maize. Zambia has a subsidy program as well. And Zambia this year has achieved more, a bumper crop. And the issue is now how to sell the bumper crop. Here in Ghana, you have, you have various programs that provide subsidies to farmers. So the whole issue here is that we should introduce smart subsidies so that farmers do not become totally dependent. The concept that we used to have that farmers just wanted handouts from government, they wanted handouts from the international community is wrong. They want to make profits. And so we have to be able to introduce the subsidies that ensure that farmers are encouraged to increase production and productivity, but at the same time to be able to sell their produce. Again, I insist on the whole value chain approach. Uh, access to land in Africa and the international community's role. You know, I think we have to understand what the international community can do in a country and what the government should do. Government should take leadership in putting in place the right agricultural policies, the right land policies. An international community cannot change a government or, or traditional uh, 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 land, land, land policies or customs, but we can work in advocacy. This is where farmers groups need to be organized. You, just, you heard what Mr. Kofi Annan said, you know, where farmers voice when they are strengthened, they can demand of governments to put roads. They can demand of governments to have access to land. Otherwise, come the next election, they will not get the vote. So it's a question of strengthening our farmers so that they know their own rights and that government puts the right policies. And a lot of countries in Africa are doing just that. 25 years ago, I couldn't be saying what I'm saying here. But the last five to 10 years, we see tremendous changes taking place in the African landscape where agriculture is at the top of the agenda, where governments are working very hard with the development partners and community uh, organizations to have the right policies in place and to, correct, and to encourage agricultural production. Thank you. Before Thank you. The gentleman from Champion, Nigeria, um, I will leave Mr. Devogi to, to give you more details on the five projects in Ghana. Uh, but let me quickly correct that uh, the current, the five projects that are currently being financed are at a total cost of uh, about 260 million US dollars. Now, this is the cost of the projects, not the total value of IFAD's contribution to the projects, because we work, with, we work in partnerships with government as well as other development partners. But Mr. Biavoki can give you details. Uh, we do not actually have IFAD projects. We have what we call IFAD financed projects. The projects are government projects, the, gov the programs are government programs. These are programs which are developed oftentimes with government where we are invited to support the financing of those programs. Now when we do that, there is a legally binding agreement with government and there are preconditions that must be met before the, gov the program is approved by my executive board. And then there are processes by which these are monitored, monitoring and evaluation. For example, just in July, we completed the evaluation of the, uh, uh, what's it called again? Rural, 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 rural enterprise project, the one I saw on Tuesday. Uh, the 
the, the evaluation was so positive about the success of this rural enterprise project, which is currently being implemented in, 60, in, uh, in 65 districts, that we are now in discussion with the government on having an upscaling, to upscale this success full program so that it encompasses the whole of Ghana, so that the whole, uh, how many districts, a hundred and something uh, districts will be will be benefit from it. At the end of this year, we'll undertake what we call a country level evaluation, where we have, an, in IFA we have an independent office evaluation, which will evaluate the impacts and the conduct of all the programs that we've had here in Ghana to help us in identifying subsequent investments in these programs. And for every disbursement that we make when we support programs, there are checks and balances. So we don't just, so what I want to say, let me assure you that any investment that IFAD makes in any country is rigorously monitored and audited to ensure that our primary partners who are the communities in the rural areas, the beneficiaries, are the ones that are impacted in this program. Um, you asked a question about the young farmer I met yesterday. That was the first, okay, that was the first question. Um, the IFAD partnership with uh, MOFA and the ARO team, I will leave you to answer that because they wanted some more details. <coughs> and how does IFAD, yes, the case of post post harvest loss in Africa is pathetic because it can go as high as 40% uh, due to poor storage in some cases like what we were discussing in the panel because of lack of access to markets the produce just stay out there poor storage facilities prices have dropped farmers are unable to sell because there's no incentive and the roads access are very poor they cannot transport their produce to just perhaps 200 uh, meters, 500 meters, less than one kilometer to the next market. And this is where IFAD is engaged. Sometimes all it takes for a, for a participant, for a community participating in an IFAD supported project is construction of storage facilities, the warehouse. Now, when we are able to help them to construct the warehouse facility, we then try and partner with the private sector that will put air conditioning in that facility because the private sector knows that they can come and buy bulk. And when you have a storage facility or a magazine, as you call it, a magazinage, it encourages farmers to bulk their produce. Then they want to sell in bulk. And when they have bulk, you then are able to attract buyers from outside to buy your bulk. So already you are transforming the whole community and you see, the, so just putting a storage facility can transform the agricultural landscape in that village. So these are the kinds of things we do to how we can reduce. Another way you can reduce loss very easily is access to markets, roads. And IFAD has several uh, experiences in what we call supporting the last mile road. The last mile is the last mile that the farmer has to, to travel from the time they sow the seed in the soil to when they can take it to the market. That last mile that needs a paved road or needs just a graded road so you can have access to his farm. The farm I saw Tuesday, Tuesday what's the name of the village again? Asamakis. Asamakis, exactly, where Christopher Ben uh, was. The road was graded, brand new. Maybe because the president of Ifa was coming, but at least he got you know. But this is a, this is simply what he needs: a couple of kilometers of road, and he can transport his cassava to the uh, to the uh, uh, milling station where the cassava is transformed to gari, is transformed to starch and other produce. Let me ask my colleague, uh, Mr. Biavogi, who is the director for Western Central Africa, and Mr. Ulash. Demere, who is the country program manager, managing our portfolio here uh, in Ghana, is currently based in uh, in uh, in Rome. But as, before I terminate, let me give you the good news. Uh, yesterday, I signed with the Minister of Finance and uh, Economic Planning on.